Um, good morning, everybody. Cut back here so I can my mask. Uh, some of you may notice that my eyes are a little bit red. I have an allergy to cats, and somehow I my jacket has come into contact with some cats. So as I was driving here this morning, I started to feel the allergic reaction start. And it stopped now that I take it off my, my coat. But that's why my eyes are red. I haven't been crying already. Um, in your bulletin, you'll see that the response to the first page is a canticle. Um, it's the song of, it's called the Song of Mary, but you might know it more, you might know it more popularly as the Magnificat. And we're going to chant this at the time that, that this comes up in the service. We're going to chant it without the antiphon, which comes at the beginning. What I encourage you to do is what Margaret has done here which is grab a hymnal from in front of you and look at the beginning pages where there are S numbers, uh, which stands for service music, and you're going to look for S242. You have sung this before. So hopefully it's not totally unfamiliar to you. Um, a chant like this tends to repeat itself. So once you sort of get the melody, you'll be able to keep following along. Does that mean? Um, I'm going to have Alice play an introduction for us, and then let's practice singing a couple of verses of it so that we're ready to go when it comes time. And I will turn off my but this is the first one. <laughs>
our opening hymn is found in your bulletin. Reading from the book of Micah. You, O Bethlehem of Ecclesiastes, who are on, who are one of the little clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to rule in Israel, whose origin is from a whole, from ancient days. Therefore, you shall give them up until the time when she who is in labor, has brought forth. Then the rest of his kindred shall return to the people of Israel. And he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord of God. And they shall live secure, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be the one of peace. 
the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. See, God, I have come to do your will, O oh God, in the scroll of the book that is written of me. When he said above, you have neither desired nor taken pleasure in sacrifices and offerings and burnt offerings and sin offerings. These are offered according to the law. Then he said, see, I have come to do your will. He abolishes the first in order to establish the second. And it is by God's will that we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Would you stand for the gospel reading? The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country 
where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be always acceptable to you, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> well, it's getting close. Right? Getting close to Christmas. And we've got the manger scene here that week by week is adding more figures to it. Were there more figures added today? Kathy? No. So it's the yeah, snow was too heavy for me to get through. <laughs> the snow was too heavy for me to get through. Okay. Well, by, by Christmas Eve, the manger will be full. And down below, Kathy will explain after the service, there is a little tableau of Mary and Elizabeth meeting each other, Mary in the blue at Elizabeth's house. So we're getting close to that story that we all remember and treasure of Mary giving birth to Jesus, the Holy One, in the manger. But before we make our journey to the manger, we need to deal with the Magnificat. We sang it. I just read it, and later in our service, we will sing a hymn called Canticle of the Turning, which is based on the Magnificat. You might get the impression that I think the Magnificat is important. What's important about it is even though we have warm feelings and um, tender feelings towards what happens in the manger. Before all that happens, Mary sings this song that is revolutionary, that is radical, that Dietrich Bonhoeffer, who you know was arrested by the Nazis in Germany, called the most passionate, the wildest, one might even say the most radical, Revol revolutionary hymn ever sung. In fact, the Magnificat, this song was banned in certain countries 
in this past century. It was banned in India under British rule when the people desired independence. It was banned in Argentina during what we might call the troubles uh, in Argentina. In the 1980s, it was banned in Guatemala. And people placed the words of the Magnificat around the city center plaza. And those posters were outlawed because any public display of Mary's song was outlawed. So people knew, political people knew and know that this Magnificat is a revolutionary text. Even though it talks about the mighty being brought down, the lowly lifted up, the hungry being fed, the rich sent away empty, it really is a song about love and about God's love for everyone. God's love for all of us, no matter our station in life. You have heard me say, and I'm not the origin of this phrase, that justice is what love looks like in public. This is a song about love in public. Now, some of you might have seen this week that Bell Hooks died. She was a feminist writer, lecturer. Um, also, I would call her a black feminist and also uh, a person who was very interested in the topic of love. In fact, she has a whole book on different kinds of love. What she said is that Love is life changing. It's powerful. The act of loving and how we love is far broader than romantic sentiment. She says love is transformative. It challenges, challenges us in both our private and our civic lives. And real love will change us. I might say, real love is desiring the best for our neighbor, who is everyone. Desiring the best for the other person and working to make that happen. Because love is not simply a feeling or an emotion, but it is an action. God, loves us all. God has us in God's thoughts at all times. But for those who are poor, depressed, hungry, addicted, trafficked, imprisoned, all those places underneath the respectable parts of society, God particularly has those people in mind. That is what the prophetic voice in the Old Testament tells us. That is what the prophetic voice of Jesus tells us. And that's what this prophetic voice of Mary tells us. And that God desires that people's lives be changed. And that those who need lifted up are lifted up. And those who need to be brought lower are brought low. Now, where do we see that happen besides the prophets of the Old Testament, besides the words of Jesus and the words of Mary? Where can we see that sort of love in action, that sort of revolutionary love in the places around us. And I want to tell you about a place in Rockford, Illinois. 
that's called Miss Carly's. Miss Carly's was started by a couple who, as I understand it, had rented or bought an unused Buddhist temple as their home. And in their home, it came with a commercial kitchen. And at some point along the way, but this is not that many years ago, the family decided that they would take the extra food that they had and give it to people who were without homes in Rockford. And you see photographs of them with a little children's wagon and food in it as they would walk the streets around their home to give out food. Well, that act of generosity and that act of love turned into something much, much bigger. The uh, example that is most profound to me is that they give and they make now and give away with the help of volunteers up to a thousand, a thousand sack lunches to people every day. There are people who come in and prepare sack lunches with sandwiches and fruit and whatnot. And anybody can come to their door 24 seven, ask for something to eat and be given a sack lunch. No questions asked, no identification needed, no reason need be given. If they come and ask for food, whatever time it is, they will be given a sack lunch up to a thousand a day. Their, let's call it ministry, even though in all the reading that I've done about them, I don't see a single word about God or religion, whatnot. But these people are certainly lifting up those who are hungry, to say the least. But in addition to that, they now help people go to sobriety houses and detox to uh, treat their addictions. I'll read in a second that the woman who began this was trafficked when she was young and they provide the rides to shelters and whatnot for people who are trafficked. They provide all sorts of services now. In addition to the 1,000 sack lunches and now communal meals. Um, and they've, they've moved from their home into a bigger building. But let me read you a little bit about this. It's, it actually might be a little bit long, but I think you'll get the drift of what I'm talking about here. This is Andrea, the woman who started this program talking. Everyone is always thanking me for what we do here. But the truth is, none of this happens without glory. And then there's a picture of a woman named Glory. I call her a juggernaut because she fits the definition of the words perfectly. A massive, inexorable force, campaign, movement, or object that crushes whatever is in its path. Do not get in this woman's way. Don't hurt, disregard, alienate, or belittle, or even look at her people the wrong way. She is a champion for the downtrodden and a fierce force to be reckoned with. If someone were to follow her around with a camera for just a couple of days, you would all be glued to the screen and exhausted just watching her. She is my role model, and I am so lucky to have her in my life. My mother was kidnapped and brutally murdered when we were homeless together on Skid Row in Los Angeles. I never really had a mother figure, though, because I was the caregiver in our relationship. I, knew, I never knew what it was like to have a mom until I met Lori. She loved me unconditionally 
and calls me out when I stray from my path. I never thought I'd meet someone who understood me and could keep up with my fervent need to be of service. And let me tell you, this woman laughs me most days. But she isn't just my surrogate mama. She is a mother to many. She knows when to step in and give that hug that brings people to a crumbling pile of tears and determination. That hug that enables you to let go of the hurt you've been carrying around for so long. She has a special power that you can feel. I have watched her be just what people need on countless occasions. She can sense it. I will never forget a particular moment when she was brushing the matted hair of a young woman who was on the brink of death. Her body ravaged with infection and trapped in human trafficking. She touched her so gently, it was like a warm glow of gold washed over the two of them for a moment of time. I've seen her brush a few of these women's hair, and it is an act of compassion, akin to washing someone's feet, a moving confirmation of love and acceptance. She gives her heart so humbly and asks for nothing in return. Last Christmas, I got a lot of cards and a few gifts. I would ask that this year you please give them to Glory instead because she carries the weight of this place on her shoulders and it is a heavy burden. She never quits. It is Glory you get when you message the page. That is the Facebook page. It is Glory in this photo who is meeting a trafficked woman to take her to the hospital because she's too scared to go alone. It is Lori who drags out the first aid kit and puts band-aids on boo-boos, just like I do for so many. It is Lori who makes sure I have 300 or so lunches to make it through the night before she leaves to go home. She has given her life to be of service to those in need, and this place is what it is today because of her. I can't help but think of Mary going to Elizabeth and getting the nurturing and the support and the warmth that this woman glory gives to the people who come to their homes. And I can't help but think of Mary when I hear about glory in doing such a tremendous acts of love day in and day out to make sure people are fed and healed and housed. I'd like to be like Lori. I'd like to embody that sort of revolutionary love. That love that also cries out like Mary does, my soul rejoices in God, my Savior, as that is the ground of all of this. Our souls rejoice in God, our Savior. Because even as we approach the manger and that intimate, warm, warm scene, on Christmas Eve, we also know that the world is about to turn, which is the promise of God that all of this will come around right for all of us, no matter where we fall. The world is going to turn through God's grace and love in a way that for all of us it comes around right. And that, my friends, 
is the promise of Christmas. I invite you to stand and join me in the affirmation of the faith of the church in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally God and of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, we God are not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified at the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the Spirit of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Friends in Christ, God invites us to hold the needs of our sisters and brothers as dear to us as our own needs. Loving our neighbors as ourselves, we offer our thanksgivings and our petitions on behalf of the church and the world. Grant almighty God that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Give us all reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, bless all those whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, we commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, for Michael, our presiding bishop, for Bonnie, our bishop, for the congregations of this diocese and for this congregation. And we pray for our church family, and particularly 
we pray for those that we may know. Does anybody have a list of intercessions? I invite you to say your intercessions aloud if you have them. Pray for Judy. We give thanks this day for the graduation of Shannon Verbal from Eastern Michigan University. Gracious God, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit that in all the cares and occupations of our life, we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Your sisters and brothers, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And I'm also with you. Please give one another a greeting of peace uh, appropriate for these times. Now that I found the um, announcement sheet, would you please also keep in your prayers Wendy's needs Lori, who has COVID, and Jane Hewitt, recovering from being hospitalized, uh, and continued prayers for those who were victims of tornado in Kentucky, Tennessee, Missouri, Arkansas, and I also believe Illinois. So we all do have an announcement sheet, I hope. So Christmas Eve services will be at 4 p.m. and 7.30 p.m. <clears throat> with Christmas carols beginning at 7 p.m. <laughs> Good, yeah. <laughs> On Christmas Day, Oh, also, you can live stream a late service, 10.30 p.m. at the Cathedral of St. Paul. On Christmas Day, just trying to get away from that. Um, at 10 o'clock, as last year, at 10 o'clock as last year, um, Bishop Perry will deliver a sermon and read the Christmas gospel. And then also at 11 o'clock is the Christmas Day Eucharist that's at the cathedral. And so you can watch both of those uh, using the, the um, link that's listed there in your announcements. Or if you just go to the diocesan website, E-D-O-M-I, 
as in the Episcopal Diocese of Michigan dot org, you'll there'll be links right there to to connect up. So four and seven thirty p.m. here, and then everything else will take us until. Um, we're we've got two trees. Uh, well, we've got three trees now. We have two lighted trees here in the in the church. One is back here, and is that the one for mittens? And okay, so we'd like to invite you to bring socks and mittens and hats on Christmas Eve um, to decorate that tree, and then we will uh, donate those um, to one of the homeless shelters. And then the tree that's outside in the parish hall upstairs, outside the office, if you'd like to bring an ornament that is not your most precious one, but an ornament to share, then we'll decorate that tree as well. And, um, and then this tree is full of symbols of Christmas and the joy of Christmas. I see lambs here. Stars, hearts, bells. Kathy, you need to come and talk loudly. Those little ornaments um, go with the words to the song about the candles. The candles. The, these candles. So oh, okay. Hope, love, peace, and joy. Right. So those those ornaments were made by uh, Atrium children a couple of years ago. So yesterday, my daughter and Jonathan, my grandson, came down and decorated that tree while I decorated that one. And they put every ornament in the box is on that tree. Underneath it oh, are tiny sheep that don't have ribbons on them. They look like they don't have a home. They don't, yeah, but they're this big. <laughs> and Jonathan decided they needed to be under the, the tree also. So that's what they are. And then we took a pic Beth took a picture of Jonathan standing by this tree. And Jonathan is now this high. And then he laid down on this floor out straight. And one of her waggish friends saw on Facebook and the comment was Death of the Archbishop. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the story of those trees. And this is one of the works of the atrium, like Carol said. It's the presentation of the visit of the Archbishop. Sarah, so Elizabeth. Oh, Congratulations. Is Shannon here? Mm -hmm. No. She might be online. She might be online or she might be in Ipsy getting her uh, in line for graduation. So it's exciting. She wrote to me 20 years in the making. Mm -hmm. And um, she has, um, over the years that I've known her, uh, worked mightily hard to earn this bachelor's degree. So if you get a chance to congratulate her either with a phone call or a, a message or a card or something like that, I'm sure she would appreciate that. Um, you can read the other announcements here. Um, we don't have them. Pardon me? We don't have them in our bulletin. You don't have an announcement sheet? Here comes you got them online and Julie. Well, here one. comes Julie. Anybody else? All right. Uh, Julie, I think you have an announcement. Yeah, so um, I don't know how many of you know. We, we have a student uh, who's been there since the summer. She's a single mom with her young daughter. And um, she does pay us rent every month. And she's been very good about getting her rent to us. Except for this month, she, she texted me and said she was struggling. Um, she um, has had some issues with her car. Of course, Christmas coming up. Her daughter's birthday was this week. And because we're good landlords, it was no problem to just extend her some time to pay the rent that she paid it full. But anyway, I met her here at the church the other day when she paid. And she was. You could tell she was distressed. And, um, and she, one thing she mentioned in particular was she was just so worried because the tires on her car are bald and she needs to get new tires. And she just wasn't sure how she was going to do that. 
So anyway, I felt her pain, and I, but I didn't offer anything at the time. But then I thought perhaps this is something that we as a church could do is maybe um, take up a collection for uh, to help her buy her tires for her car for Christmas. So, um, and then outreach has offered to uh, whatever we don't collect, um, we can kind of come out of the outreach funds for the, for the church. So if you all are interested in donating, we'll take the cash from the collection plate today and, and, and give it to George for the tires. Um, Judy, would, if, would it be possible to, if someone wants to write a check to file it through outreach? Yeah, I wrote a check and I just put, well, the checks to St. James, and I just put tires in the memo. And then that way it will go directly to the curb. Um, just in case anyone. Well, I, know, I don't know anything, but Margaret will figure it out. Just tires on it to get it. I, I just, I think it's a good idea to have a check for tires and then just have it sent out. So the, um, we don't, you know, we don't have the collection plate around anymore, but it's sitting right back here if you want to drop something in there on the way out. So, or throughout the week, you can just, you know, we could even go online to the EDRMI and put St. James, put tires there. Okay. Yeah, thank you. So, just so you know, we don't get that information until January. Um, so we won't know how much has been donated. So if you do it through the diocese, Send us an email at the church as well so we know how much we should be giving her. Okay. So you can donate in cash, you can donate with a check made out of St. James with tires in the memo, or donate on our online site um, and write a note to our St. James office just letting us know what the donation is. Okay, so we're going to try for a new, a, a new set of tires. Is that correct, Julie? Yes, that's correct. Okay. All right. So if she can have safe wheels, especially for her daughter, um, that would be a good thing. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. <clears throat>
Before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all for the remission of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection. We await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, 
presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray, you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where, with all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Does everyone have a challenge that would like one today? Or you have some in the back if you want to raise your hand. If you need one, then do we have some? Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. And there was a blessing of God. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven.
the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Send us now into the world in peace, 
and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, be upon you and those you love this day and forever. Amen. Amen. Life is short. We do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who walk this way with us. So be swift to love and make haste to be kind. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah.
downstairs. I know there's a tree, but I'm not sure there's coffee. <laughs> there should be so, uh, Stopping your phone recording, but I didn't. Okay. Uh,